Preme dala dala sona ronga charani no pura bhaje. Mukunda madhava yada bahari. Bole na bolo re bandha na bore Bole na re rati Diva sa shari E mana du la bo mana vade ho Paya ki koro bhava na ke ho E mana du la bo mana vade Charana pori bela haje. Odi tatapana hoile asta. Dina jelo pole hoi baby asta. Kabeke no e be alla sa hoi na bajari ta ya raje. Jiva na anitya janna hasa. Tahi na na vida vi padha bha. Namma shraya kori yata ni tumi. Taka pana kaje. Jibera kalyana sadhana kam Jagati asiye madhura nam Avidya timira tapana rupe Rigo gane bi raje Krishna nam shuda kori apan Yuro bokati vinoda pran Nama bina kichu nahi koara Choda bova nama haje Nama 
चिपचाको चिपचाको घर चंदा बोले कोठनिद्रा चायो माया Tishachirako hole Bhaji bhabaliya ese Samsara bithare बोले यारो हिले तुम्हें अब जा रहा बहरे तो मारे लोए ते आमी होइ नो आवाज़ारा आमी बिन बंदो आर के अच्छे तो महारा ने चे औषधी माया नशी पर लागे हरे नाम महामंत्र लो तुमी महागी बाकाती बिनोड़ा प्रभु चराने परे हैं से हरे नाम मंत्र लोय लो मोकिया नित्य गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरी भो नित्य गौर हरी भो नित्य गौर हरी भो हरी भो हरी भो नित्य गौर हरी भो Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Was it uh, Narayanam Namaskritam? 
naram chaiva narottamam devim sarasatim vyasam tato jayam udirayat nasta praeshu vapadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki I will reading Srimad Bhagavatam chant, uh, chap, Canto 10 Chapter 80 Text num, beginning text 43 eh? 43 to 45 Yeah Okay so the verse on the board is 45. So let me read 43 and 44. Text 43, Lord Krishna continued, We had many similar experiences while living in our spiritual master's home. Simply by the grace of the spiritual master, a person can fulfill life's purpose and attain eternal peace. And then text 44 says, The Brahmana said, what could I possibly have failed to achieve? O Lord of Lords, O Universal Teacher, since I was able to personally live with you, whose every desire is fulfilled at the home of our spiritual master. Then text 45. Yashya it Yashya Chando Mayam Brahma Dehe Avapanam Bibo Shreya Sam Tasha Gurushu Vasho Tyanta Vidambanam Yashya Chando Mayam Brahma Dehe Avapanam Vibo Shreya Sam Tasha Gurushu Vasotyanta Vidambanam Yashya Chando Mayam Brahma Dehe avapanam vibo Shreya samtasha gurushu Vasotyanta vidambanam
Yashya, whose, Chanda, the Vedas, my um, consisting of, Brahma, the Absolute Truth, Dehe, within the body, Avapanam, the sowing field, Vibho, the Om, o Almighty Lord, Shreyasam, of auspicious goals, Tashya, His, Guru Shu, with spiritual masters, Vaso, residence, Atyanta, extreme. Vidambanam pre, <laughs> pretense. Translation. O oh, Almighty Lord, your body comprises the Absolute Truth in the form of the Vedas and is thus the source of all auspicious goals of life. That you took up residence at the school of a spiritual master is simply one of your pastimes in which you play the role of a human being. There's no purport to that verse, but there is a purport to the earlier verse. So we'll read that purport to 44, yeah? 44, we'll read the verse again. The Brahmana said, what could I possibly have failed to achieve? O oh, Lord of Lords, O oh, Universal Teacher, since I was able to personally live, since I was able to personally live with, with you, whose every desire is fulfilled at the home of our spiritual master. And the purport, Sudama Brahman wisely understands his extraordinary good fortune of living, of having lived with Sri Krishna at the residence of their spiritual master. Thus, whatever ex extreme difficulties they experienced were actually an expression of the Lord's mercy to teach the importance of service to the spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada renders the learned Brahmana's feelings as follows. Sudama said, My dear Krishna, you are the Supreme Lord. And the mass and the and the supreme spiritual master of everyone. And since I was fortunate enough to live with you in the house of our guru, I think I have nothing more to do in the in the name of prescribed Vedic duties. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsurun Militanena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Sadvadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पदन सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा नितम्स हे कृष्ण करण सिंधु दिन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंठा राधा कंठ नमोस्तते तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामि हरि प्रिय वंचकौपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु बाय एव पठितना पवानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदे गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so sudama brahman is very nicely describing his good fortune in being able to live in the ashram of sandipani muni along with the personality of godhead lord shri krishna sudama had that opportunity that he could even uh, go with krishna they he described lord krishna describes how they went together into the forest to collect firewood to bring to the ashram for sandipani muni uh, for his wife that you know maybe for the cooking or for the yagya to do keep the homa going so they had gone together the two of them sudama and lord krishna to collect the firewood to collect the dry wood and during that time they've been they got lost they, there was a storm just like last night there was a storm unexpected you know out of nowhere suddenly the storm came and and if you were in the forest you could imagine then it difficult to go back home cannot find the path because you go wandering in the woods looking for dry wood and you expect to find the footmarks your footprints on the ground but the rain comes and it washes away all the footprints so you don't know the path you cannot see the path anymore so in this way lord krishna and sudama together spent the whole night in the forest you stay in the forest at night of course it gets cold in the night and there are wild animals you hear the jackals <laughs> right and so many other things are there maybe even tiger comes you don't know certainly a little dangerous to be in the forest and they spent the whole night there and sandipani muni came of course and he was so appreciative the next morning sandipani muni saw that they did not come home so immediately the, he came with all the boys from the guru kula and they go and search and they found krishna and sudama together and sudama uh, sandipani muni was so grateful to them that oh you have sacrificed you've risked your lives for my service he was so appreciative and of course he blessed them and you heard the blessings in the previous verses that they would never lose a taste of the mantras which they'd learned very important to get that blessing to keep the taste for the mantras which we are learning so sandipani muni his ashram is still there if you go to ujjain and previously ujjain was called Av avantipur and the ashram is there 
When we first used to go to that place, there was, it was very basic, very simple. But over the years, in the recent years, last few years, they've developed it very nicely. And they've got murals of each of the 64 arts. <clears throat> Lord Krishna had stayed there, Sandipani Muni's ashram, for 64 days. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram went together. You know, they, Krishna had killed Kamsa, freed Vasudevan Devaki, and Vasudevan Devaki wanted that their sons should be educated. So they sent them to Sandeep Panimuni's ashram. You know, our parents, they put us, where did they put us? In uh, <laughs> IIT or something, yeah? if you're lucky. <laughs> we go to some mundane educational institute and learn mundane knowledge. But Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram went to Sandipani Muni's ashram and they learned the 64 arts which are mentioned in the Vedas. And they have a mural of each of the different arts. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram learning these different things. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they don't have to learn anything, but they do these things for the example. The example is very important to show the example for others. That just as Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram went to the ashram of the Guru, it is proper. For if you have a son, you should send them to Gurukul. They should get some spiritual education. Even in countries like in Thailand, Thailand's a Buddhist country, and they have the culture that the, the son should go and be a monk for some time before he gets married before he goes into the material world and takes up a job and like that. Let him first of all go and live in the monastery and be a monk. Either be a monk or be a soldier. You know, now they have th these things today. Join the army. You, know? you join the army in Singapore and in Taiwan. The men have to join the army. Two years, military training, compulsory. So Thailand, they say, you don't join the army, become a monk. Go and live in the monastery. Get some education, spiritual education. They don't give much education, but just think, if people would come to Krishna consciousness, if they would spend a couple of years living in the ashram, practicing Krishna consciousness, how much their life would be benefited, how their whole life could be changed by having that good association. Some of the people who are living now in Mayapur, they have come to Mayapur to bring their children there to get education. Because they say the education they get living in the cities is so terrible. The association is so poor, so bad, and it's so damaging to their children that they're willing to leave everything and go and live in Mayapur just so their children can get education in a nice environment in ni with nice association very important to get that kind of start in life therefore in seventh canto prahlad maharaj has also said komar acharet pragno dharmam bhagavatam iha to have the human life is very rare it's a very great fortune to be blessed with a human body. We may not think it, we don't always appreciate, but it's very 
great fortune. But having achieved that human life, we have to use it for the proper purpose, to cultivate this Bhagavad Dharma. And from the beginning of life, we should do that. Kumar, the young boy, very important to get that kind of training in the beginning of life. And then one's outlook on life will be greatly improved. Today, you go to college, you go to universities, Srila Prabhupada called them. What did Prabhupada call these universities? Yes, you all know, right? And you're also, most of you, in the slaughterhouse. And you pay fees <laughs> to be slaughtered. Yes. Then so we go through these things. We waste this human life. So we have to understand how fortunate Sudama was that he was able to go to the ashram of Sandipani Muni and Lord Krishna was also there as a student. So he got the, the best association. Right? And why did Krishna, why did they go through all the difficulties? Living in the ashram, certainly there are difficulties. Yes, we know there are difficulties. Maybe it, the facilities are not as good as what you have at home. And you're thinking, oh, this is not so comfortable. And we have to get up earlier in the morning. Oh, this is trouble. There are many rules actually living in the ashram. Just like in the Nectar of Devotion it describes how the brahmachari should not eat until the spiritual master calls him. So one day this uh, Prabhupada's servant, uh, Upendra, his name was Upendra. He was one of Prabhupada's servants. So he was serving Prabhupada. And he read this, how the disciple will not eat unless the spiritual master calls him. So he wasn't taking prasadam. And Prabhupada noticed. And Prabhupada said, why are you not taking prasadam, Upendra? Upendra said, Srila Prabhupada, you didn't call me. Prabhupada said, I am always calling you, come and take prasadam. So Prabhupada is very, a very merciful spiritual master. Uh, <laughs> didn't require, he didn't wait, he didn't require that, that we had to, he had to call all of us to come and take prasadam. So serving spiritual master, we go for sankirtan and whatever we will collect, we should bring for the service of the spiritual master. Nothing is for our own self. There's a, this, in the Mahabharata, it, in the very beginning, they describe about three different students. The one student, the guru told him, you go to the field, take care of the crops in the field. And he went to the field and he saw there was a hole in the wall, in the dike, and the water was all running out. And he thought, oh, this is very dangerous, the water's running out, how to block the water? He laid down and used his own body to block that hole in the field. And Guru came and he saw this disciple was laying there. He said, what are you doing? Why are you laying there on the ground? He said, I'm blocking the the hole because all the water will run out. The Guru said, oh, very wonderful. You are a very good disciple. I bless you with all transcendental knowledge. And so he appreciated that the disciple was ready to 
sacrifice his own bodily condition for the service of his guru. And he blessed him with Divya Gyan. Another student, he was serving the guru and he wouldn't eat. The guru, why are you not eating? Guruji, you didn't call me. And he did like this every day. He would not eat until the guru, first of all, would eat and then he would call the disciple, come, you come, take prasada. So the guru was very pleased with him. He gave him divya gyan. But there was another student. He told him, you go take care of the cows. So he sent him to take care of the cows and he saw this student, he's getting fat. He said to him, how is it you're getting fat? He said, Guruji, he said, are you eating too much prasadam? He said, I'm, I'm only taking milk, Guruji. He said, where do you get the milk from? He said, from the cows. He said, what well, that milk from the cows is not for you to drink. That milk is for the deities. You cannot drink the milk like that. Oh, sorry, Guruji, I didn't know. So go back, take care of the cows. So he went back. And he saw still the disciples quite fat. He said, so what are you taking now? He said, well, he said, well after they milk the cows, I lick the udder. I get the milk from the udder of the cows. He said, no, 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 you cannot do that. That's not for you. These cows are for the service of the deity. You're not allowed to drink any of their milk, even what's left on their udder. You cannot take that. Oh, okay, Guruji, I'm sorry, I didn't know. So he went back. And so then sometime Guru wondered what happened to the, the, this devotee, where's he gone? And he went, could not find him. <laughs> so went to look for him and then he, they, they found out that he'd gone, somehow he'd gone into the forest and he'd fallen into a well. What was happening was he, he went to eat some berries because he could not take any of the milk from the cow. So he went to find some berries in the forest and he ate some berries which made him go blind. And he, in his blindness, he fell into the well. So the guru went to look for him and they found him in the well. So the guru wants to get him out of the well. He arranged to get, first of all, food, special prasad to give him. But the disciple said, no, no, Guruji, I cannot take it. It's, you've not given, it's not mine. I cannot take anything without your blessings. And so the guru understood that now he is ready to get give yajnan. He is completely submissive to the will of the spiritual teacher. That he will only take whatever the guru gives him. Without the blessings of the guru, he would not eat. So guru was very pleased and then gave him divya gyan. So the scriptures say, Yashya Devi para bhakti yata Devi tata guru. Tashaiti prakitahyata prakashanti mahatmana. And to those souls who have faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, then all the purports of the scriptures are revealed very easily. Sometimes we will ask people, do you have more faith in Guru or more faith in Krishna? Who do you have faith in, Guru or Krishna? Some people will say, Guru. And some other people will say, Krishna. Both are wrong. Right? Because Guru is representative of Krishna. So we should have equal faith in both Guru and Krishna. When you have that kind of faith, 
then all the purports of the scriptures are revealed to us. So faith in the Guru, being willing to go through difficulties, just like uh, Atul Krishna Prabhu was telling me how they're doing recordings of the different devotees who went to Bangladesh to begin the preaching there in Bangladesh. Prabhupada told different devotees, you know, Prabhu Vishnu was the first. Prabhu Vishnu had got, as you heard, I was with the library party, BBT library party. So at one point, devotees also went to Bangladesh to distribute Prabhupada's books. This was 1977. And Prabhupada, Prabhupada, told the, Prabhupada told the devotees that there's a lot of Hindus there still. You'll find a lot of Hindu villages there. Definitely you can distribute our books there. So uh, Prabhupada Vishnu went there and Prabhupada told me, he said, you open a center there. And Prabhupada Vishnu said, there's no money there, Prabhupada. We'll never be able to maintain a temple. Prabhupada said, I will maintain, I will give you money every month to maintain temple. And for several several years, many years, Prabhupada, because Prabhupada, although Prabhupada left the world that year, 1977, but he had told his people that Bangladesh and Nepal, they should get money to maintain the preaching there because Prabhupada wanted us to establish centers there and the devote Prabhupada Vishnu was the one who got that opportunity and he told Prabhupada, no money there, we'll never maintain a temple, even today, you know, <laughs> Nepal is very <laughs> difficult. Uh, it's between China and India. It's the pea between two potatoes. <laughs> right? India and China are like potatoes, Nepal is like a pea. And so, you know, very difficult things are maintained. So Prabhupada arranged to give them money to maintain the temple. And it lasted for several years and then they, they finally, the BBT trustees and the people who, they said, we can't keep giving this money, you've already had enough time. And you know, they'd already established the temple so they could maintain it themselves. So, but initially the, it was very difficult to go there, to go to Bangladesh, very difficult. And Subhak Swami got told, Prabhupada told him, go to Bangladesh and preach. You know Subhak Swami? Bengali, right? Huh? coming today. So anyway, when he went to Bangladesh, they, I, had, I told Krishna told me that he got, he got arrested by the police at one point, put in jail for some time. But that devotees, they tolerate that just like in Australia, Kurma, Kurma Prabhu, the famous cook. Have you ever seen cooking with Kurma on the, on the internet? They have this, uh, they have this, uh, Theory, they have this program, you know, cooking with kurma, demonstrating how to cook different vegetarian dishes. He's an Australian and he's a big kind of plump guy, you know, and he's very jovial and, and he, he has this very, he's published many books, many vegetarian cookbooks. And so they have this series which I think it's kind of finished now, but about 10 years ago or so, they had this series which was on satellite TV everywhere, all over the world. You'd see Kurma cooking, doing cook. So when Kurma was a young boy, young devotee, as a young devotee in Australia, they would distribute books. And the government were stopping them. And the police were arresting the devotees. And Prabhupada said, go to jail. Don't worry about it. He said, let them put you in jail. Even if they put you in jail, doesn't matter. Prabhupada told the devotee, you have to do like this. 
He said, one day they will recognize our movement. And so sometimes the devotees would go through these difficulties. Be a, you'd be arrested. You know, usually you're, 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 you try to be an upright, moral citizen. But service to the guru is higher than just mundane morality. Just like Krishna told a lie. Krishna doesn't care about mundane morality. He cares more about spiritual, real devotion, the care of his devotees. He wants to establish religiosity and he's willing to break his word to establish religious principle. So, you know, most of us, we're, the thought of being arrested, oh, going to jail, oh, how humiliating. But the devotees would accept that for the service of Krishna. We'd go through these difficulties just for the service to the spiritual master. Because Prabhupada had ordered us to do this. And even when Prabhupada came to Australia, the reporters asked him about his disciples. They said, they said it seems your disciples are having a lot of trouble, that sometimes they get arrested and put in jail. And Prabhupada said, yes, we're lucky. So far you have not crucified any of us. <laughs> Uh, that Prabhupada understood that it's going to be difficult in some countries. But he wanted us to do it, just like Prabhupada went to Russia. He went to Russia in 1971. It was still communist. And Prabhupada went there and they made the first devotee. They got one Russian boy who was very interested very, very interested. He had so many questions. And Prabhupada arranged a woman, a French girl. French women are known to be very attractive. <laughs> so he, he arranged a very nice French woman to go there to Russia to marry this man and train him up to be a good devotee. And he became a very good devotee. And he spread Krishna consciousness all over Russia. Of course, he suffered. He got put in prison. And they gave him drugs. They, they gave him drugs to try to change his mind, to change his mentality, to give up his practice of Krishna consciousness. The devotees accepted that austerity for the pleasure of Krishna. They had so much faith in Guru and Krishna. And you can read the book. There's a book about it, Salted Bread. You, have you read, if you read that book, you can read about their life in Russia in the times of the communist regime and how they suffered and what they went through. They were put in prison and they would get the bread and they, they would make beads out of bread. You know, Russian bread is always a bit hard, do you know? And they were giving them bread which was really hard. And so they would use that bread to make japa beads because they'd take the beads away from them. So they would make beads for themselves from bread. And they would put the bread on a string and they would chant. It's an amazing book. You should try to read that book, Salted Bread. And you know how, the, how much difficulties they went through for the service of Krishna and Guru. And Lord Krishna is showing also this by his own example. Lord Krishna and Sudama, they accepted so much difficulty for the pleasure of their Guru. This is the duty of a disciple.
just like there are many examples. Uh, the Ramanujacharya, the, the Shivites wanted to capture Ramanujacharya. The Shivites were opposing the Vaishnavas, the Sri Vaishnavas, and they could not catch Ramanuj. Then they disguised and Kalesh, the, the servant of Ramanuja, put on the dress of Ramanuja and he went as Ramanujacharya and he got arrested and then they burned out his eyes. They burned out his eyes. The Shivites burned out his eyes and then sent him back to, Tri uh, to Trichy, to Sri Rangam. And when he came in front of Lord Ranganath, Lord Ranganath gave him back his eyes. There are many examples of the, the faith of the disciple, how they will sacrifice everything for the service of the Guru. Of course, not everyone is so surrendered. But in those, in initially, and in, in even today, we do find devotees, there are devotees that are very surrendered. They will give everything. Jayananda Prabhu, you can see his Pushpa Samadhi at uh, Rajapur, yeah, where the Jagannath Temple is in Mayapur. So his Pushpa Samadhi is there. So he had leukemia. He was dying, but they told him you can get this medicine. It won't. Then it will take away a lot of the pain. The only thing is the medicine is quite expensive. And Jayananda, he had some money. He said, I don't want to use that for my medicine. He said that money. You give that money to Prabhupada to print his books. Just let me suffer. I don't need, I don't want to waste money on medicine. It's not going to save my life anyway. So better, just let me die. Why I should waste the money on this material body? And he gave the money to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, you can read in Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada thanks Jayananda for his generous contribution. I think it was like 5,000 US dollars in 1960s, which was a lot of money, quite a bit of money then. Nowadays, 5,000 US is not very much, but in those days, 1960s, it was a lot more. So Prabhupada was appreciative of his sacrifice. There are many examples, endless example, devotion to Krishna and Guru. And that, that is required. That is how you make spiritual advancement. When you sacrifice for the pleasure of Krishna and Guru. Yeyatamam prapadyante tams tataiva bhajamiyaham. As you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. So this is the, the message which we get from this pastime of Sudama Brahman and Lord Krishna in the ashram of Sandipani Muni. Lord Krishna wants us to understand that we should be willing to accept some difficulties for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. Are there any questions? Oh no, you're all so quiet. You look, oh my goodness. I've, I've scared you all, was it? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful class. Maharaj, <clears throat> uh, you told very elaborately about how we should earn the mercy of the Guru. So, uh, I feel that there are many people who are very close to the Guru. 
to their spiritual masters but uh, that also does not help them become very advanced so because if we don't properly see the spiritual master we may commit offenses or we may consider him like a ordinary person who is making material having material deficiencies <laughs> and many people also turn to a conception that uh, seeing this material defect that uh, we don't want any we see that all living person will have some defect so they don't want to surrender to anyone so uh, how uh, how a disciple should understand who is his guru and how he should actually overlook the faults and what is the actual thing he should see in selecting a spiritual master are you asking me how to select your guru is that your question uh maharaj like i want to ask that what is the actual thing that one should see in the spiritual master because any person will have material defects so no person can be free of material defects how one should actually seek or what he should see in a spiritual master well the relationship is that one should approach the spiritual master described in bhagavad gita tadvidi pranipatena pare prashnena sevaya so these things are required first of all pranipatena you fall down submit yourself humbly and then pare prashnena put questions you should inquire and the inquiry should be in relation to the absolute truth and then sevaya service you should we should give service so that is generally the procedure we should hear from the spiritual master we have to hear for a good a good period of time it's not just one time oh yes this is my guru no you have to hear repeatedly from him you have to be convinced this person can change me so you talked about people sometimes getting very close to the spiritual master but still not making advancement and that that can happen and prabhupad talked about that rishila prabhupad described that sometimes people would be like the bug the insect, mosquitoes also very close but his business is to suck the blood right so you don't want that kind of closeness we want to be close but actually we're told don't get too close because when you get too close then you will start to see the spiritual master in the wrong way you will see him as an ordinary person and you will become offensive that is a dangerous condition you get too close and you see the spiritual master do something and you may say oh you know, he's just like me i'm just an ordinary person so we're warned don't get too close that you become over familiar and you start trying to give instruction or you think you know better than the spiritual teacher we have to be willing to hear now sometimes the teacher may ask what is your opinion and prabhupad would also sometimes ask devotees like that he would ask them what should we do what is your opinion what do you think sometimes if you are asked for your opinion then you can exp you can express your thoughts but you have to we have to be very careful about how we associate with the spiritual teacher don't get too close don't get too far away you get too far away it's also a problem you're far away you don't hear you don't fall, you don't care to do anything for the service of the guru you just oh i got initiation yeah i have a guru you never go to hear you never give any service you never take interest you know so that kind of initiation has no meaning there's no no purpose in that kind of initiation 
you have to, you have to have some contact. There has to be some connection there. But remember, guru is not just simply only diksha guru. There is also shiksha guru. And they're equal. We should see them equally. We don't make distinction. Does that help you? Does that answer your question? Yes, Maharaj. Very much. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay. Any other question? Ms. Prabhu? Maharaj, I'm asking this question second time. <laughs> I asked you this question earlier also. Maharaj, when you are talking about uh, sacrifice for spiritual master, so the, the thought that comes to me is that the advancement of disciple depends on his ability to make sacrifices for spiritual master or in other words is renunciation. So renunciation is also one of the material opulence out of the six. One is renunciation. So what troubles me now is that devotional service is also dependent on something material, the ability of renunciation, the ability to perform penances, austerity. So, uh, so conceptually it doesn't fit. We see devotional service dependent on something, something material, something mundane. Uh, I'm a little confused about it. Well, I don't think renunciation is necessarily something material. There is, of course, renunciation in the mode of, in the modes of nature, but renunciation for a devotee is of a different level. You see, renunciation is this, in Bhagavad Gita, you have the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. You know, you can do renunciation. In Malaysia, they have a festival every year that's called Thai Pusam where the people, Tamil people in Malaysia, they worship Murga, Murga, Kartikeya, right? You call Kartikeya North India, South India Murga, and they have this Thai Pusam, and they will stick hooks into their body, and they put a thing through their mouth, a big pipe, and things in the tongue, and, and, and sometimes they walk on shoes of nails, they, 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 and they carry the milk for murga, to offer to the deity at Thai Pusam, and they'll carry it to the temple and put And that's the mode of ignorance more, you know? But it may also be the mode of passion that they do it for some material benediction, and maybe they, they, they want to offer something. But it's not devotion. Renunciation in devotion is described for us that Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. It must be in relation to Krishna. We give up things in relation to Krishna. Just like yesterday, we observed fasting until the evening. We did fasting for the pleasure of the Lord of Gornitai, for their benefit. We observe fastings on these holy days. And similarly, we also do things like uh, ch chanting every, ch you could say, not, well, chanting is not really, re what renunciation would be going to the holy places and performing parikrama, that can also be a type of renunciation because you have your comfortable home, but we have to do some Tapasya, do some, we have to practice some renunciation and that renunciation should be in relation to Krishna. So you go to a holy place connected with Krishna. We don't go to Vaishnavi Devi, we don't go to Banaras or like, but we go to Vrindavan or like that, Mayapur. We go there to these places in connection with the devotees, where we can get association with devotees, where we can see the Lord and we can hear the holy name and we can hear the kata 
from the devotees who live there. So going to the holy places is an austerity. Many people went there. Parikrama, there were 12,000 people on Parikrama this year. Most of them were Bengali. There were like four groups of Bengali people. They embrace it wholeheartedly. They take great pleasure in undergoing that austerity. This, us, we need to renounce in order to purify ourselves. But the renunciation should not be dry. It should be in relation to Krishna. And you take up more devotional service. Just like you could say going out to distribute books. That is also a type of renunciation. We go out and distribute Prabhupada's books and try to meet the people. People who are not very devotional, who are not very spiritual. We approach them and we try to convince them of the need to read the Bhagavad Gita or to take some interest in Krishna consciousness. That is renunciation. Going to these people, going to Jaghai and Madhai and trying to engage them in Krishna service. That is the, the mood of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda was asked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm, to, uh, how does it go? Priti gari gari gya koro e bhiksha bolo krishna bhajo krishna koro krishna siksha. Right? You go every town, you go to every alley, every gully, and you knock on the doors and you beg the people, read the books about Krishna, worship Krishna, chant the name of Krishna. And Nityananda would go and fall at the feet and touch their feet and beg them. Mother, please chant the holy name of Krishna. Please worship Krishna. Read the books about Krishna. He would beg them. That is renunciation. That is not material. We give up the false pride and we go there to try to give Krishna consciousness. We have to be willing to sacrifice the false ego for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada wanted that everyone in the Krishna consciousness movement should learn to distribute books. He said, this is our family business. Just like your father has a shop, then you have to also go and work in the shop with the father. You see the the Marwari people, you know, they have the business and their children are there in the shop. You know, they're taking up the business. So the same way, our father, Prabhupada, he had the, the family business. This is our family business, distributing books. It, it takes renunciation. We don't distribute books for our benefit. Well, actually we do. Because when we try to distribute these books, we're making spiritual advancement. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was glorified by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, right? He composed the, some verses glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga, Shikshartha Eka Purusha Purana, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Sherera Dari, Kripam buddhir yastvam maham prapadye. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give everyone the uh, vairagya and vidya, detachment from the material world and transcendental knowledge. Right? And these things had been almost lost in the course of time, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to again give these things, to bless everyone with this. Of course, initiation is also that. Diksha is also giving transcendental knowledge and taking away sinful reactions. 
to accept diksha requires also renunciation. You have to submit yourself. We say tadvidi pranipatena. Not everyone is willing to submit. Not everyone is willing to fall down before the spiritual teacher. Why? False pride, false ego. We are thinking, I am a big person. I am an important person. Why I should bow to this person? Like that. Renunciation requires to give up that bodily conception of life. So we have to cultivate. We will be forced to renounce in time because God comes as death to take everything away from us. It's better to renounce voluntarily than to be forced to renounce. And we will be forced to renounce. We will all be taken out from our comfortable homes, from our families, from our nice situation. We will all have to be detached one day. So better voluntarily to do it rather than by force. You want the Yamaduras to come and take you, drag you, come on! <laughs> You have to come with us to Yamalog. Better we, we give up everything. I, I have nothing. I've given everything to Krishna. So it's better. Don't wait for the Yamadudas to come. Take you away. Better to submit to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj, for uh, the class. Uh, Maharaj wanted to ask this question that uh, <clears throat> many times we hear about, like today you were so nicely telling the sacrifice of disciple for the pleasure of Guru, uh, going on missionary spirit to spread the mission of the Lord. And many times we hear, so when we hear, we get that uh, inspiration and that, uh, uh, that mood of dedication to be ready to uh, give up our bodily convenience to, for the pleasure of Guru. But in time, because uh, the complacency again comes up and we, we are not ready to give up, we again go to our comfort zone and the, we do our devotional service, but not with that much vigor, that much is expected by Srila Prabhupada. That was in the Srila Prabhupada time, we see disciples were ready to give their life. But uh, now, uh, like I don't see in myself, other devotees are doing, but I don't see in myself doing that much vigor to please Srila Prabhupada. So how can we develop that same vigor, vigorous spirit like you have? You are in such old age, the old body. You are giving so much for Prabhupada. Well, stay around. Just keep in the association with the devotees. And one day the devotees will drag you along. The devotees will say, come on, let's go. Come with us. Let's go. We're going to go to the moon. Come with us. Let's go and open a temple there. <laughs> There's so many places to go to preach. They were, they were saying, in Mayapur, the devotee was giving class. He said, we'll give you a one-way ticket. They go to do some preaching. Yeah. So you just keep in the association with devotees and we should be attached to the devotees and to being with the devotees. And just seeing the example of other devotees, it should inspire us. That, you know, why I should be attached to this mundane world, this material world. What, what am I going to get? What is the benefit out of this material life? 
So it takes time, you know, you, you have to gradually uh, continue, keep practicing, keep practicing Krishna consciousness and gradually you'll become more convinced of the need to dedicate yourself more fully to Krishna's service. In the beginning, you know, up and down, you know, you're not. Are you living in the temple? Yes. Living in the temple? Okay. Huh? Yes, He's joined full time. Okay, good. So keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going, following the process. Keep hap Keep engaging in service and. Gradually, you know, you have to take more and more responsibility. That is required. Responsible devotees, they will want to give lectures. They want to go and open a center. They want to go and do something to establish Prabhupada's mission. We should be thinking, what can I do for Krishna? Okay, yes? You have a question, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaji. Uh, my question is, uh, main aim of life is to get detached from all the uh, materialistic things but uh, like previously majorly people used to uh, do that as a in a form of sannyasi after 60 so, means uh, as per as now whatever age group after 60 we retire so then whatever is we had we retire then thereafter we go for sannyasi uh, sannyas in the jungles and uh, uh, oldest people they used to go after le leading their grihast life and all that so uh, like we see now that mostly people uh, enter that life before uh, means detach themselves from all the things before uh, leaving, living all the lives. So I think that does that not lead to uh, deficiency in their experience uh, because uh, up till the 60, age of 60 you had experienced a lot of things and then when you absorb things that will uh, you'll surely means it will come automatically to you. Uh, so, my just my question is that is that not the is there a right age for detaching? Means you know everything, you are practicing everything, but detaching from everything because when you not enter into that, then how you'll know what is bad, what is good? Means I don't, I'm not saying that we need, uh, we have to go into bad things and do that, but we need to uh, like. We need to know that, yeah, this is bad, this is good. So you have to see everything. Uh, no. uh, means before detaching from everything, you have to have the feel. Something is bad or something is... I'm not saying that we have to practice it. Uh, just I want to say that if we... Like previously, we spend our life for 50 years or 60 years in the world and then we detach from the, all the materialistic pleasures. So why can't uh, we... Practice, uh, we uh, go in that trend right now. Mm -hmm. uh, why it is necessary to, uh, means I've seen 10 to 12 years to uh, people detaching from materialistic desires because they don't have so much uh, experience, knowledge, in the sense that uh, they have not seen the world so much. And directly, mm -hmm. just taking things. Yes, people say like that. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada was giving sannyas there in Mayapur in 1976 and one of the, one friend of Prabhupada's was there and Prabhupada, the friend was watching the ceremony and he said to Prabhupada, he said, Swamiji, he said, they're all very young, you know, they were young men taking sannyas, you know, he said, they're all very young. But Prabhupada's reply was, if they wait till they're old men, what can they do? No, when you get old, you can't do very much. But the young man, 
you know, they have full energy and strength. They can go and they can do a lot. But if you wait till you're old, oh, oh, my back problem, oh, my leg problem, oh, my health problem, and my family problem, you know, so difficult things. Yeah, generally, Vedic culture is like that. The renounced detachment comes later in life. The Vedas say, Pancha Sorvam Vanam Brajit. From the age of 50, you should go to forest. You like that? Go in the forest? <laughs> of course, Kali Yuga forest is, where is the forest today, you know? <laughs> Can't go to forest. Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness movement is there. Come to the Krishna consciousness. Anyway, the Vedas say like that. Age of 50. Why 50? Half the life is over. You're not going to live more than 100. Most people don't live 100. Anyway, 50. You're required to detach from the world. That is it. The, about that time, 50, because it takes time to detach. If you've cultivated attachment for many things, it's going to take time to detach from all these things. So you have to allow yourself time to get rid of these attachments. Therefore, Vedas say 50. From the age of 50, you should prepare vana prasta, retired life. Not renounced, but retired. Retired from mundane material work and take up spiritual activities, studying the scriptures, serving the deities, being in the temple, doing service. That is required for the, for the end of life. For, not everyone can renounce, but retirement is there. That is compulsory for everyone. You have to retire, right? And the Vedas say 50, you should, about 50, you should prepare, give up all these things, no more. No more children. <laughs> no more, no new home, no new car. Just concentrate on the spiritual aspect of life. Why? Because death warning is there. 50 means you're old. Anytime you can die. Are you ready? You have to prepare. So from the age of 50, you have to cultivate detachment. Absolutely necessary. Now for some people, not many, very rare, some people, they can do it from early in life. Just like Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. You know, he detached, he took sannyas when he was 18 or 19. You know, very young man. <laughs> yeah, And he's still like that, more than 50 years as a sannyasi. Some people, they have the samskars from previous life. You don't need to, it's not that you ha have to experience, oh, you know, I have to experience the miseries of material, then I can renounce. No, you don't have to experience all the miseries. You, peop some people, they know, they understand that there's a lot of misery, there's a lot of trouble in material life. And they, will, they won't want to get involved with it. They will just leave it aside. Other people learn by hearing. They hear. Just like we hear, it's wrong to steal. If you steal, you'll get caught, you'll get put into jail, you'll be punished. So an intelligent person won't steal. He knows it's wrong. In the same way, we learn there's a lot of suffering in the material world. And the more attachments we have, the more we suffer. So why should I bother getting so attached to everything? I should detach. It's like Buddha. The Buddha was like that, right? He was a young man. He gave up everything. So our process is 
not to give up everything, but to use everything for Krishna. You don't have to give up, but you do have to change the consciousness and use it for Krishna. Don't think of everything for your own sense gratification, but think how to use everything in relation to Krishna. We don't say you cannot get married and have a family. You can do all that. Do it in Krishna consciousness. Make Krishna the center of the home. And work. You, you, have a, you have to have a job. You have to earn something. Okay, work. But be Krishna conscious. Count, practice spiritual life at the same time. So, so we, of course, renunciation. In ISKCON nowadays, they're very strict. In Prabhupada's time, Prabhupada gave young men sannyas, and it wasn't very successful. Very few people survived. But Prabhupada did it because there was a need to show people renunciation. There was a need for that kind of people, for sannyasis, to be there, to lead and to, to teach. But nowadays in ISKCON you have to be at least 40 before they will even consider sannyasi. They're much more careful now about awarding sannyas to people. And even nowadays for brahmanas, you want to be second initiated, you should learn, we should study Bhakti Shastri. If you haven't studied the scriptures, then what kind of Brahmin are you? You don't know any verses from the Bhagavad Gita and you want to be a Brahmana? That's not very good, right? You know, you have to learn. Brahmana should have some knowledge. So we have, we're trying to bring up the standards. And renunciation is also, it requires, you know, training, detachment. You have to cultivate that attachment to Krishna. Sannyasi, Prabhupada said, sannyasi means walking dead man. <laughs> A walking dead man. No material responsibilities. You don't have any connection with the material world. Our duty is only for Krishna and the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So some people can dedicate themselves. They have the samskars from previous life. Maybe in previous life, maybe they had already cultivated that. So for some people, it's easier to take up. And for other people, it's more difficult. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandabad Pranam. So in your previous answers, you said that uh, it is a renunciation to preach Krishna consciousness in form of books, books to those people who are faithless or to uh, preach Krishna consciousness to people, faithless people like Jagai and Madhai uh, is a form of renunciation and the service to Krishna. But in the ninth of the ten offenses, it is said to, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name is also an offense. Mm. So isn't it contradictory? Uh -huh. Well, we have to understand how do we give Krishna consciousness to these Jagai Madhais. You have to create faith in them. First is to create faith in them, help them to develop their faith. And then you give them Krishna consciousness. How do we nourish their faith? Prasadam and Kirtan, nice Kirtan and Prasadam, these two things help people to develop their faith in Krishna and then it's much easier to give them. We don't try to preach too much to them, <laughs> but if they like Prasadam, there's hope. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashak Narsim Swami Maharaj Ki Jai.